Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is day three and the final day of creating a piece of movie poster artwork featuring my wonderful friend Converse Ninja portraying Black Panther. This was a three-day event on the channel. If you did not see day one and two, ultimately this was in response to the untimely death of Chadwick Boseman, who portrayed Black Panther in the Marvel films, as well as other brilliant performances in different movies. He was an incredibly inspiring actor. He passed away on August 28th, 2020, of stage four colon cancer. He was 43 years old. In times of crisis, when I'm dealing with a lot of emotional stress, I turn to creativity and Photoshop to be able to find a little bit of peace of mind and clarity through the art of creating and I wanted to bring that to all of you. So if you are dealing with the emotional fallout of the loss of this wonderful human being and talented actor, or if you're just interested in education about composite artwork, ultimately that was the reason why I wanted to bring this to the channel over three days. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to the Google Drive where you can download the JPEG images, a few of them from the session that I photographed with Converse Ninja so that you can follow along in these videos from day one, two, and three or you can create your own artwork utilizing some of the other poses that are in those JPEGs. I do want to give a quick disclaimer that I am offering these images to you for educational purposes only. I do not own the copyright or trademark for Black Panther. You're on your own for your artwork and what you do with it once you've created it. If you did not see day one and two, essentially check those out once you're done with this one. Today is the world building of this piece of artwork and all the elements that go into play. The other stock images that are in this piece, those are not available for download because I purchased those from Adobe Stock and other stock sites. So you'll have to find your own stock to follow along to try to replicate this piece of artwork or I encourage you to use the other images and poses to create your own artwork celebrate this wonderful character from the Marvel films and the brilliant wonderful actor who portrayed him and inspired so many and unfortunately passed away entirely too soon so let's continue and finish up today day three of creating this piece of movie poster artwork featuring Black Panther Converse Ninja and celebrate the life of Chadwick Boseman Hi folks, welcome back to this final video in the Black Panther movie poster series where we're finally going to be able to create the movie poster itself. So let's get right into it. But first, we need to talk about the inspirations of what we're going to be doing with the stock and how we chose it. So this is a screen capture from the movie. And this is the scene where, again, King T'Challa Black Panther goes to the ancestral plane to visit his father and uh, have that communication. When I use the film and look at this image, uh, using the film as a source of inspiration, there's a lot that I can derive from it that will help me make decisions about what stock I'm going to use and other aspects of art that I'm going to use to make this movie poster. So first and foremost, for me, the first thing that I see in this is color. I don't, I don't think about the location or the character or textures. I think about color. And of course, specifically the top portion of this area of the uh, Borealis that we see that's glowing across the horizon line. I love those colors of purple and magenta and a little bit of blue and so forth and those streaks of highlights that suggest to me that other world or in this case the ancestral plane. And I love how the stars and that Borealis effect uh, seeping down and coming down, fading into the clouds of this typical African landscape that you, you know, is indicative of. Uh, it, it gives us that connection of otherworldly that's connecting us into a worldly environment. And so this one scene from the film was the most poignant to me and this is what i ultimately want to call back to with this movie poster design so uh, you know the elements of the african landscape the borealis the panthers and king t'challa black panther so when i look at this though in this image this is again from the film the color choices that i'm seeing here for the bottom half of the image the landscape itself is this blue turquoise uh, teal spectrum that I, i'm just really not drawn to and I don't, I don't like, I'm not seeing the feeling there. And I want more, I want a more vibrant color. When I think about the African landscape, I think about, you know, a bright sun and warm tones. I think about the heat. And of course, you know, the, the plant life in the African landscape is going to be green and browns and so forth. But you're also going to have a lot of oranges and yellows and, and those colors that make up all of that. And so I want that to be in that realm. But I'm also thinking about one key element 
that is not here that I want to see. And it's what is so mesmerizing to me about cats is their eyes. And their eyes are so incredibly powerful and poignant with color. And so in this case, a panther's eyes, a black panther's eyes are going to be more in that yellow orange realm. And I want that to come through and I want to see that. So in when I was looking for the stock that I you know, am ultimately going to be putting into this piece, where's our panther? The eyes are that yellow orange. And I want that to be represented in some shape or form in our final artwork. So instead of utilizing this base area uh, color choices from the film, that is the blue, teals, and so forth, I'm going to do a combination of purple, magentas, and orange, because I want that orange to really come through and get that warmth that's back into the overall feeling of this design. So let's get started putting the elements together and start fusing these elements of stock together to start creating our composite we'll see how far we get uh, as far as timing is concerned i may split up this video into two but let's get started into it so first and foremost we need to make our new document that we're going to put all of our stock into so i'm going to hit Control or command and n as in new and it's going to bring up the new document window when i make composites in the beginning i used to make them as 12 by 18 12 inches by 18 inches because that is able to go up to 20 24 by 36 very easily and 24 by 36 is the standard movie poster size most of the time uh, and lately in the past year or two I've been making 16 by 24 documents because 12 by 18 is just a little too restrictive for my taste and 16 by 24 if I need to go up to a larger size there's not really that much that has to be cropped off from the perimeter to be able to fit a 24 by 36 but in the purposes for today's video we're going to make a 12 by 18 because it's just a little less uh, strain on the computer and the computer is also recording the video so i'm going to go ahead and hit create but first let's talk about it 12 by 18 inches we're at resolution of 300 pixels per inch we're using the rgb color mode and we're in 16-bit mode which is absolutely key and one of the previous videos in the series uh in the, in the overall composite series i talked about why it's so important to work in 16-bit mode you get access to all the colors you need to work in 16-bit background contents is white that's fine we could do transparency we're just going to do white and then in the color profile space we're adobe rgb 1998 you can choose whatever color space you wish this is just the one that I use and then I'm gonna hit create and now we have our new blank document that we need to start pulling all the elements into to start creating the composite when I create composites I try to start with the background first and work my way forward and what I mean by that is whatever I'm going to see in the final vision whatever is the furthest in the background that's what I start with and then I work forward so in this case I know that the first piece that I want to use for my background is this. This is the stock that I purchased from Adobe that has that feeling of the Borealis, but it's not the straight up and down lines, it's these swirls and so forth, and I like that more. I don't want a literal rep replication of this scene from the film. And if that's something that you wanna do from a design perspective, that's fine. I mean, if you're going to go ahead and make something that is, is as close to form and as close to the original artistry of the film, certainly feel free to do that, but for me, I wanted this. I wanted these swirls because this makes me feel like I'm caught up in a tumultuous storm of light. And that's how that scene made me feel because of the uh, close personal feelings I had to it because of my own uh, experiences in the past. So I'm going to hit V for the move tool and I'm going to hold down the shift key, drag this up to the tab that says Untitled One, which is our new document. And because I held the shift key, when I let go of the mouse, it drops the new stock precisely in the center. Then I'm going to resize it to be in portrait orientation by rotating it. I'm going to put my mouse uh, to one of the top transform controls and hold down the shift key so it'll rotate it in even de degree increments and then let go and I'm going to hit enter to accept the transformation. The new texture goes off the entire all the sides of the document itself so I'm straight and good there. I don't have to worry about missing any textures anywhere else. Now I need to bring in the second piece which is the star field. This piece I purchased from Dollar Photo Club but they don't exist anymore. Uh, you might be able to find an approximation of it on... Um, uh, Adobe stock, but I got this from uh, Dollar Photo Club a long time ago. So I'm going to hit a view for the move tool just to make sure I'm on it, holding shift, dragging it up to untitled one, and then letting go. Same thing, I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise or clockwise, excuse me. And then I'm going to hold alter option and come to the right corner transform control. You can come to any corner, by the way, for this. 
and then hold Alter Option and it will resize all corners at once instead of having to just resize one at one side and then go to the others and balance it out. And then I'm going to hit OK because again, we've went off all the sides of the document. So I know the entire document is filled with this and I don't necessarily need to resize the signs here to stretch them in to make sure that all of the stock is being utilized in our document. I think this is good enough. So I want these two pieces of stock to interact with each other and I want them to infuse with, with each other. The easiest way to do that is to use a layer blending mode and that would be my first uh, thought to do. But what I want to do is to think a little bit more strategically. I want all of the effects of this, this Borealis swirl, so to speak, to be present as much as possible. What I want from the star field is first and foremost, just the stars. If some of the colors and so forth and patterns come through, that's fine, but I'm looking for just the stars themselves. So doing a blending mode can potentially get me there, but I know that using blend if is going to get me there probably faster and it gives me more control and a little bit more uh, a chance to, to artistically experiment to see what can happen. So while this top layer of the star field is active, I'm gonna come down to the FX tab in the layer window, click it and come to blending options, which will bring up the layer style dialog and at the bottom of the layer style dialog i have the option to do blend if blend if the two different functions are this this layer means this star layer the shadow region midtones which are the grays and then the highlights i can start choosing which aspects of this layer i want to start blending down to the stock below or I can say all of the stock below the underlying layer, which is the Borealis, I can let its shadows, its midtones, or its highlights blend up and through to the stock above. So in this case, I want to start with the shadows of the stock, the star stock, to let that just fade away because the highlights are the stars. If I let the shadows fade away, I should just be left with the stars themselves. I'm going to hold Alter Option to split this little triangle so that the effect will be feathered and not be heavy handed by just moving the whole triangle itself. Hold Alter Option, the triangle will be split. And now as we look at the screen, the shadows are starting to fade away from the stars, letting them come through to, to stay there, but letting the Borealis come through. And right about there, because I like this orange that I'm still seeing because it's going to go into my overall color design. And so the orange can only help at this point. I love the blues that I see and everything else. I think this looks really slick. Um, we can experiment with the other sliders, but I don't really think it's necessary because I like this infusion pretty much the way that it is right now. But as I bring in the other elements of, of Black Panther and so forth, we may have to make some changes to this. But for now, I think it's good. So I'm going to hit OK. So we have our two elements here that look really good. What's the next aspect that I want to put into this? It's the panther. So I'm going to go and grab the uh, picture of the panther. And at this point, I've taken the time to do an extraction of the panther. I use the quick selection tool. Uh, I actually did select subjects. So I let Skynet do all the work for me. And I made the selection so that now the original stock was the panther on white. And now we have a layer where we have the layer mask itself so that the panther is extracted. I'm going to go ahead and hit V for the move tool. Tool, hold down shift, drag it up to the untitled one uh, tab and let go, which will drop it right into the precise middle. I don't want to resize this yet because let's go ahead and get the other elements and then talk about design 101 and choices and how we position all of them in this piece. So let's go ahead and get our picture of Black Panther, V for the move tool up to untitled one, holding shift and letting go. And then let's get our African landscape, which is right there and grab that one and bring it into the document as well and drop it. So now we have our three different elements. Let's turn off the landscape here and uh, the Panther itself. And we're just dealing with Black Panther now. Design 101. We're looking at this document from a perspective of the rule of thirds. If we take this image and divide it into thirds, roughly here's a third, and there's a third. And then if we think about it from another third perspective, from the portion orientation sign, there are the rough thirds. These are not precise, but you get the idea. We have elements where we can put all of these pieces together in the rule of thirds and from a design discipline that will make the piece more pleasing. So what do we do? Well, Black Panther is gonna be our signature piece. So right now his head is in the top third and it's in the center top third of our piece. So I think he's actually pretty good right where he is. We don't need to resize him or move him around or do much of anything. 
So now we have the negative space, so to speak, of the background all across the board. We don't want that to be, or document, I should say. I don't want all of that to be gone for sure, but I want to be able to do something with it. So what can I do? Well, I have two other elements to come into play and I have two thirds of this image that need to be used because I'm not going to go ahead and keep this bottom portion of Black Panther, his pelvis and down, because it's not really that engaging. Visually, we have his arms that's doing the Wakanda forever, and then we have his head, the mask, and that's visually appealing to look at, but his pelvis just doesn't really do much for us. And this is uh, what I call a postcard composite where we don't see their feet. So realistically, the most visual aspects that I want to show are his chest and his head, not his waist and down. So if we think about getting rid of that part of him, then we have a full third down at the bottom that's not going to be utilized. And at the top, we have a top third that's being divided by his head right down the center. So what if I take the panther and turn it back on and move it up? So that the head of the panther and the head of Black Panther are in the same space, in the same third. I'm going to resize the panther by holding Alt and grabbing one of the corner transform controls and start increasing the overall size so that the eyes of the panther are really piercing and coming through. And that's the presence that I'm looking for. And the whiskers are there. The head is there. Of course, its shape is being lost a little bit. Uh, the ears are being lost a little bit. So I can decrease the overall size of the panther and get us to right about there. But I don't think we have to see all of the aspects of the panther, the, the head and the ears and so forth. I don't think we have to see them. I think it's those eyes. Those eyes and the whiskers and a little bit of it will communicate the message that this is a panther. And of course, if people are looking at the picture of the Black Panther and knowing, hey, that's the Black Panther and you see some eyes behind it, I doubt anybody's going to look at it and be like, is that like a monkey's eyes or what, is that an elephant? What is that? They're going to think that it's some kind of lion or a panther or cheetah or tiger, a cat, and they're going to go, great. What kind of cat is it on a Black Panther poster? It probably is a panther, right? Anyway, so my point is the most drawing aspect of the panther is the eyes and so we're going to leave that into play but those eyes now are filling the top third of our document in the negative space so now the middle parts uh middle third his arms are so wide his chest is so wide at this point because of the pose that there isn't a lot of space there to fill but the whiskers are filling it so we're fine so what's left the bottom third that's where our African stock can go. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down. And now, much like the movie scene, we have a landscape that shows us where we are. We have a top portion that shows us the magic of where we are. And in our document, we have two subjects that communicate why we are there, what we are supposed to draw from all of this. All we have to do now is put them together in a pleasing way, utilizing blending modes or blend if or whatever else we need to do to put them together and make them work together in this document. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, African stock and bring it down. And I'm going to bring it down below the panther, above the panther, doesn't matter. I just want it below the black panther so that the black panther character is at the very top of the layer stack. And I want him to be the most present and then the rest to be infused together. Let's turn him off. And let's turn off the African landscape first and let's work with the Black Panther first, the Panther stock, I should say first. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and on this layer mask, I know right now, let's zoom in just really quickly. I'm going to go ahead and clear all of my guides real quick that we just put onto the screen. We have some fringing right through here. It's that white little line that we see at the edge of the Panther. That fringing is a part of the extraction process. And I could have taken the time to clean up the layer mask to get rid of that. But I know that I don't necessarily need to keep that outer perimeter of the Panther. I don't need to really see that. I can fade it into the background. Because when I start doing a blending option here, it's going to be painfully obvious that we don't need it. So let's go ahead and do the blending option first anyway. So while we're on this layer, I want to consider the blending modes first. Just as we did blend if and blend if gave me greater control. If I do blending modes, I know that they can get me, like I said, to close to what I'm looking for, but not all the way. And I don't have the controls that I'm looking for. So if I come down to overlay, that's very cool. Actually, I think that's really neat, but it, it makes the piece and that top third more about the stars and the, the uh, Borealis than it does about the Panther soft light. 
that helps a little bit, but still it's very much about the, the Borealis and not so much about the Panther. I want the Panther to be more present. If we do lighten or screen, again, it's all about the, the Borealis and the, and the stars. And I, I need the Panther to be more present. So I'm going to take the blending mode of the Panther back to normal. And I am going to go ahead and do a blend F. So I'm going to come down to FX blending options, which will bring up the layer style dialogue. And now I can make some decisions about how I want this to blend. So first and foremost, I think the easiest thing to do since the Panther is so black and dark is to choose the shadows of this layer, which is the Panther and split the triangle by holding alter option and start feathering it in. And wow, it's like there, that's what I'm talking about. We're getting that infusion of the background stock and of the, the sky and the stars and the, the Borealis, but it's still more about the Panther than it is about that background because I have the control of how far I want to go. This is kind of an approximation of what the blending mode was a moment ago, and that's too much. But because of this slider, I can start controlling all those aspects and I can experiment. So this layer, the shadows, what if we take this layer's highlights, which is gonna be the eyes and then the nose a little bit. And what if we split that and start feathering that into the mix? Yeah, it's the eyes and they're fading away and it's kind of an interesting aspect a little bit, especially up here on the uh, upper left quadrant of the panther, but uh, I don't think that's helping us. So what if we tell the underlying layer, the stars and the Borealis, what if we tell it, I want those highlights to push through the panther and be seen, to blend if and come up, just as we did with the stars uh, and the, nub and the uh, Borealis. So let's go ahead and hold alter option, feather it out and start letting those stars come through. Yeah, that's really cool. We're letting all of that nebulous uh, specular highlight come through. The colors are coming through, which is really neat. Uh, let's let the underlying layers shadows come through. Mm, no, we're, that's taking us further away from the panther. So I think a simple blending of the shadows of the panther. Let's bring it back down a little bit so we get more of that feeling of the panther. And then letting those highlights come through of the background. Yeah, that's really slick. I dig that. So I'm okay with this. But now as we look at it, there's a clear defining edge of the panther and then we have the background showing through i don't want that i want this to be a suggestive feeling a subliminal feeling so that as the viewer spends time looking at the piece of artwork they suddenly go oh my gosh is that a panther like oh wow that's really cool i want to see more of that so in this case since i have the layer mask of the panther all i want to do is fade it out so i'm going to hit b for brush my flow is at 3%. I'm gonna be painting with black as my foreground color, and I'm just gonna to come to the edge of that selection on that layer mask and just start feathering away the panther just a little bit on those edges. Right up here at the top too, just feather those away a little bit more. And I can increase the uh, flow of my brush. Let's go to 10% instead of 3%. And just start feathering that effect away right through there so that it's just a feeling like it just, appears and that we start we're able to start making out the overall shape of the panther by using the structure of the eyes and the nose and the whiskers and so forth if we zoom in of course we can see this very delineating line of the edge of our stock of the panther this is something that you always need to watch out for when you're making a composite because if you don't pay attention to all the layers and their actual edges you'll be able to see them in your final work and it, it just it will look bad so i'm going to go ahead and feather that edge out all the way across by simply just painting black on the layer mask which is hiding the effect of the layer and bring it up just a little bit right there hit control or command zero to zoom all the way back out that in itself is really cool like this would be like a poster i would see it like the store michaels or you know a poster somewhere in a cool store and be like oh wow that's so neat i want that um so in this case by simply using three pieces of stock and using blend if we've been able to make this really neat uh piece just all on its own but it's going to get even better because we have the black panther and africa to put into this so let's go ahead and do that let's go on to the black panther uh and see how he plays into the mix so i'm going to go ahead and do the same idea of blend if because i know that if i do a blending mode like overlay or soft light it's going to get me close but i don't have the access of control so i know that i want to use blend if to get that control but i do know that by using blend if it is inevitable that parts of the costume parts of the face are going to disappear faster than i want them to i don't necessarily want um, all of it to go away 
So to protect against that, I need to make a duplicate layer of Black Panther so that that duplicate layer has no blend if on it whatsoever. It's just the normal blending mode and the normal blend if there's nothing access to it. And I can use that layer selectively by using a layer mask to bring back certain aspects of it. And I'll demonstrate and it'll be become more clear. But since I know that I'm going to duplicate him, what I want to do is accept the layer mask first and apply it. Because if you duplicate a layer that has a layer mask on it, you're building up that perimeter of that layer mask more and more and fringing can occur. Haloing can occur and it can become obvious and seen. Imagine the layer mask of the panther with that white haloing aspect. If I would have duplicated that twice and forgot to erase it somewhere else, that would show up really clearly in, in the image because the layer mask is preserved. So I'm going to go ahead and while uh, the Black Panther layer is active, I'm going to click the layer mask itself, right click it and come down to apply layer mask. And now the layer mask has been applied. The background of the original image is now gone because the layer mask has been accepted. So now we just have the extracted layer of Black Panther himself. Now I'm going to hit control or command J to duplicate the layer. And then I'm going to turn off the top layer. This will be our original preserved layer of Black Panther that we can use some of those details with a layer mask to selectively bring it back into the mix. Now let's come down to our first layer of Black Panther and come down to the FX tab, blending options, and start working with the blend F. What would be the easiest blend if? It's the same thing we do with the Panther. The Black Panther's costume is black, so let's go ahead and say this layer, its shadows, let's split the triangle by holding Alt or Option and start letting those feather, and my gosh, that's cool. Wow, just, I mean, the further you take it, oh, it's so cool because uh, you're seeing the details come through and, and the aspects, but but here here's, here's what's cool about this. This is, has me so excited. Here's what's cool about this. Look at the design. And let your eyes drift for a moment. Let your eyes wonder. Let your eyes and your imagination start completing the image from what you can't see. In 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 um, in, it's a, it's a, a psychology aspect in a horror film. What's what's more frightening to you are the things you don't see because your imagination completes those aspects. In this case, what's exciting to me is I can't see the panther's face. I see its eyes and I see its whiskers, but I know it's there. But when I look at him and he's doing the Wakanda forever, his arms are taking on the shape of the panther's face. The panther's nose, all of this detail that's right here in the center, that's coming through right where his neck is. His face is connecting. His body and his pose are completing the image of the panther, at least to me. I think that's really cool. <laughs> and again, it's achieved by simply using one mechanism inside of Photoshop, which is blend if. So in this case, let's go ahead and continue the process. I think that blend if on its own is good, good enough, but I knew that because we would do it, certain aspects would be missing. And we could, you know, I'm sorry, let's go back into the blend if. I'm going to go to the FX tab, blending options. I want to try the same thing we did with the Panther. I want the underlying layer. I want the highlights, which is the stars and the Borealis, to come through. So I'm going to go ahead and hold Alter Option to split the triangle and feather it just to get some of those stars. Yeah, that's really cool. That's so neat because it looks like he's a part of it now. He's a part of the ancestral plane. And he's a part of the spirit of the panther. And gosh, I can, I can still see elements of the panther and its fur and its head. The, the wisps of the Borealis that's through here. These wisps of the Borealis feel like it's the face, the eyebrow of the panther. His arms, it's, it's just, it's such a neat thing to see. So um, while we're in this aspect of it on this layer, again, I knew that the bottom uh, third of the Black Panther layer is not going to be necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer mask, a white all layer mask, by simply just clicking the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers window. And then I'm going to hit B for brush. My foreground color is set to black, and I'm going to change my flow from 10% to 100% by hitting shift and the number zero. And now I just want to feather out and paint away this bottom portion of black panther because we don't need it that's where the african stock is going to go so let's go to our top layer of black panther and turn it back on and 
you probably have guessed it, we need to put a hide all mask or a black mask on it so we can carefully paint in where we want the new details to be. So I'm gonna go hold Alter Option and click the layer mask icon which puts the hide all mask on top, hit B for brush, and then I'm going to hit the letter X to switch my foreground color from black to white because we're on a black mask. I need to paint white to start revealing this layer. And then I need to do this very, very carefully. So I'm going to change my flow to probably, let's say 5% by hitting Shift, zero, and five. And now I can start painting in some of the original detail back into the image carefully. Where do I want to do that? Well, I first want to do it on his face. Definitely his eyes as well. I want them to be there. So I'm painting white on my black mask over just his eyes and the, the eyebrow and the uh, cheekbone structure and so forth of the mask to pull that through and get some of that back into the mix. Let's go ahead and hit the front grill part of the mask right down there by his mouth and bring some of that back in. But I don't want to go too far anywhere else because I love how the uh, Borealis is zoom in just a little bit. I love how the Borealis effect is coming through there. That one star, that's all really cool. Maybe that one star is a little too distracting. That one star probably is going to be too distracting in the mix. These other little ones are fine, but that big one right there, that's going to pull too much focus, I fear. So we need to get rid of that, which means we need to go to our star layer. And I'm going to use the spot healing brush to get rid of it. So I'm going to hit the letter J, and then I'm going to make sure coming to the tool palette, I'm on the spot healing brush. And then what I want to do is make sure that it's set to content aware so that when I click and engage the brush to the dialogue right here, I'm going to actually click the um, star stock right now. I'll click it and it uses content aware to look around and fill in the blanks. The traditional healing brush, I would have had to target a selected area to source from to use the healing brush. With the spot healing brush on content aware, it'll search and find something and then just paint it into the uh, into the mix itself. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command Zero to zoom all the way back out again <clears throat> and take an overall look. I think the detail is is there on his face and I like that, but I think I'm losing just a little bit of the Wakanda Forever, of the arms. So I want to bring some of that back in. So I'm going to paint some white onto that mask. And again, it's at a flow of 5%, so it's very low. And just bring some of that shadow detail back in right along that perimeter. So we start seeing his arms just a little bit more. And it should hopefully help complete that overall feeling. Yeah, I really dig that. The whiskers of the panther are coming through. It's really cool. Let's just give him a little bit more definition into his hands so that we see the Wakanda Forever shape. That's really neat. I love that. And then maybe just a little bit at the base of his chin so we can make out the overall feeling of the edge of his mask, the bottom of it, I should say. Yeah, that's so cool. I love it. All right, let's bring uh, the African stock into it now. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn on the layer. And my first thought is this. I need to take the aspects of this image and infuse it to the background. And I could use Blend If. But I don't, I don't want the stock in its purest form to blend if. I want it to have more of a uh, ethereal, magical feel. And that belies to me the, the necessity of doing a blending mode first and seeing how it can come into play. And the one that I'm thinking of is Color Dodge. Because Color Dodge essentially uses the colors in the image to dodge the layer below whatever it's, you know, where whatever layers are beneath it in the layer stack itself. So all these bright colors of the sunset should show up really bright, dodging the star field and the uh, Borealis layer. And since the colors of the grass and the trees are relatively darker compared to the sunset, they won't dodge as much. So it, I think technically they should still be a silhouette. And the sky, because it's so bright, when it dodges, it can't help but make the trees a silhouette. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and try it and see what happens. I'm going to change the blending mode of the African stock down to color dodge. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I dig that. I, there's some issues here that's pulling focus and distracting. There's a, there's a lot of issues that are distracting. But what's key to this and what I was looking for was, was this horizon line through here and these trees. And, and, and the colors are, are too strong. The reds, it's, it's, it's too much. But I know that I'm going to be doing a step here uh, utilizing uh, purples and oranges through the entire picture. So I'm not worried about that. I am thinking about this from a luminosity perspective and detail, not color at all. 
So in this case, I love what I see through here. This is really cool. It gives it that ancestral plane, and I think that's wonderful. It's these elements through here that I don't like. And those are probably the clouds in the original stock. Yeah, they are. So they're the hot edges of the clouds because they're, they're pretty bright. If I, uh, let's turn off that mouse guide. Yeah, these are brighter. So let's go back to color dodge for our blending mode. So what I want to do is just, I think the easiest thing to do is just to use, we could use blend if for sure, but that's going to start affecting the rest of it. Let's just use a layer mask and get rid of it. Cause I don't think these clouds are ne uh, necessary. It's the sunset and the trees and the horizon line that's key. Because even, even in our source material, you can see the clouds, <clears throat> which is why I thought that piece of stock that I purchased was perfect. But I think it's it's just distracting too much. So let's use a layer mask, a traditional one that's white, or a, a reveal all. We're going to paint black on it. Let's change our flow of our brush to like 30%. And I uh, start at the top and just feather it down. I'm going to change my flow now to 10% because I need to be a little more careful and build it up. Yeah, it was those top ones. And I'm going to leave the clouds here because then it gets us back to that feeling from the uh, movie screen capture. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to feather it just a little bit more. I'm going to hit shift zero and five to take my flow to 5% and just feather it down just a tad more. No, I like that bright orange area through there. Yeah. I want, I want these hot <clears throat> lights to build up and through Black Panther. I just didn't want those ones that were way up here. Yeah, I like that overall flow. Okay, so I think that looks wonderful. But, and as I had said uh, toward the beginning of this, that there are other elements and issues that will only become apparent when we start doing the blendings. So the first one that I, I really don't like at all, and it's it's the Borealis layer, is this this swoosh of light through here. Because it's so dark there, and it's brighter here, and this is a distracting pattern to me. I don't mind this one because it feels like that wispy uh, Borealis feeling, but this one is bothering me. And it's really, it's just because it's such a strong delineation line between highlight and shadow that's bothering me. So let's go ahead and come to our Borealis layer and let's use the spot healing brush and just let it fill in the blanks by using content aware. So I'm going to make contact once and trace a line like this all the way up through and let go. It has to think for a moment. Yeah, so much better. Let's do it again right here in the center where it's a little too dark. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. The only thing that I want to do now is this edge of uh, Black Panther. Let's mask that out and feather it out just a little bit. So where is he at? There he is. We have his mask already um, because we, we got rid of the bottom part of him. So let's switch our foreground color to black. We're painting at a flow of 5%. That's fine. And let's just feather him out a little bit along that edge. So like the panther and painting out the sides of the panther, uh, Black Panther, the cosplayer, is uh, the character is, is seeping through now and just kind of pseudo appearing. I'm going to get rid of some of the texture of his costume right through there. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, this is so cool. I love this. Control or command and zero to zoom all the way back out. <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. We have, we have all the aspects that we need to tell this story and to tell the, the story of the part of the film that was so poignant to me. And because I communicated that to, to Converse Ninja, it was so poignant to him because we connected uh, about our fathers and about this character in so many aspects. And, and this is it. All we need to do now is just to add the colors, the purple and orange colors. And I mean, and, and, and of course, if you like the way this looks as an artist, go for it. That's fine. But I, I want more of that unity of those two colors and let it come into to the fold to see how we can work with it. So the easiest way to do this, to, to add the colors to it, especially when you're thinking about two colors, is ultimately to use a gradient map. It's an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers are, as I've said in previous videos, are just tools. And they're tools to tell Photoshop to do something to the layers depending upon where the tool was positioned in the layer stack. In this case, I want this gradient map to use two colors to affect everything in the image. 
So I'm going to put the gradient map at the very top. And so that tool will tell Photoshop, I want these two colors to be in play for the entire picture. And I want it to affect everything because it's at the top of the layer stack. So I'm going to come down to the adjustment window here, the adjustment uh, uh, controls, and then I'm going to choose gradient map. Now it's chosen a black and white gradient map because those were the two colors, my foreground and background color. And so therefore it's on top and it's showing me that uh, these are the colors it's going to interact with. And what I need to do is to set the colors to purple and orange. And to do that, I'm just going to click anywhere on this bar, which will bring up the gradient editor itself. Now Photoshop CC 2020, I think this was also in 2019, but 2020, uh, they have uh, vastly upgraded the gradient map editor because it used to have like, 10 or 15 uh, gradient maps built into it, like a rainbow one and a couple of others. And then it was just, it was it. Uh, now they have given you a broad, wonderful selection of different gradient maps and colors. And they're just, they're truly a delight to, to work with. Um, and all it, it's really doing is it's populating colors in this area, in this field. And if you think about this field, what is it? If you think about blend if we had the controls with blend if to be able to take one slider which is the shadows and move it over and we had one slider which is the highlights and we can move that over and we could feather it right well we can kind of do the same thing here but it isn't luminosity values it isn't blending things it's color choices and how they will gradient into each other how they will blend and feather into each other this pure black is starting to feather into the white so that's why we have the gray here in this center section and then we have the pure white because we have set this little box to black and then we have this little box set to white. They're called color stops, as you can see on the screen. So I first want to click the black box, which brings up this option here where I can change the color. So I'm gonna change the color with the color picker that populates the moment I click it. And this is where I'm going to pick my purple. And uh, let's go ahead and pick uh, you know, a, a decently bright purple, uh, maybe right about there. I kind of like that one, that looks pretty cool. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna to come to the white box, click it, and activate this little option, click it again, and I'm gonna choose an orange color that's pretty bright. Let's bring it down to make it just a little more rich and we'll come up in here and get that. And yeah, now we're starting to get into, into the aspect of what I was looking for and getting into a little play of this. So I'm gonna say okay because I have my two colors. But before I say okay, one thing, like I said earlier with the blend if and you can move the sliders to start feathering the effect and you can do the same thing here but it's not necessarily feathering it it's saying one of these colors is more predominant than the other so if I grab this orange slider and bring it over I'm starting to tell Photoshop favor more of the orange in this aspect instead of the purple or subsequently if I take it back I can say favor, favor more of the purple and make it more rich in purple instead of orange I want it to be a little bit more rich in, in the orange instead of the purple because I want those warm tones to come through. But another thing before we move on with a gradient editor is you can add more colors to the mix so that you can get more of a range of colors. And to do that, all you need to introduce is new color stops along this map. So I'm gonna move the purple up just a little bit and then I'm going to position my mouse all the way at the edge, the little hand is right there and I'm going to click and it makes a new color stop and it populated it with the exact same color that I chose before. But since this is the one that's active, I'm gonna come down to where it says color and click it and now I can make a deeper purple. And notice how the shadows in his arm, anywhere where there is deep shadows in the image itself, it is now interacting with those shadows with a deeper tone because I'm telling it on this side of the gradient map to be a little bit darker. So let's say, okay, let's do the same thing on the orange side. Let's move the orange in a little bit more, position our mouse right here to the right and click, which will give us a new color stop. Come down, click the color option, and we already are pretty bright in there. So let's go ahead and leave this one actually. Uh, let's, let's try this. Let's leave this one as it is because it populated this first color here when we made the new color stop. So we're just gonna say, okay. But now we're gonna come to this square and click it, which will engage it. And we can come to the color thing and we can choose a different tone of orange, just a little bit more into those reds and hit okay. Yeah, it's kind of actually pretty neat. Although I think it's a little too, <clears throat> a little too dark. Uh, not in the yellows, right up in there. I think it's okay, but ultimately it's so close to the other stop. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and click this other stop and then hit delete. 
And now we're back to these two colors of purple and then our orange. And since we've moved the orange in, it's favoring uh, the oranges as we work with it. Uh, let's put it right there. And it's getting those rich oranges into these highlights down here, which is really cool. It's getting that deep purple into the shadows. And this is what I was looking for. But we need to do a couple of more things. I wanted this gradient map to affect all of the color. And I've chosen the colors, but I haven't changed the blending mode. The blending mode is still set to normal, so the map is affecting it in this way. I could reduce the overall opacity of the map, and I probably will wind up doing that here in just a moment. But what I need to do is to change the blending mode to tell it to interact with the colors and be the color of the image. And now when I change that blending mode, this is the rich tones of purple and orange that I saw in my mind. This is what I wanted to create. And we're getting this beautiful orange sky through the entire piece. We're getting these rich purple tones everywhere. And I love, I just love the richness of all of this. It's such a wonderful aspect to it. But it's a little intense. So I can either lower the opacity of it, which is starting to let some of the original colors seep through. But lowering the opacity, again, is just a, a, a very general change. I want better control over it, and BlendIF gives me that better control. So while the gradient map is active, I'll come down to the FX tab, hit Blending Options, and now I can choose which aspects I want to come through. So in this case, this layer, the gradient map, I want the deepest tones of it to start blending down, which is letting some of that darker original tone come through. And what's happening, if we look, is over here in this perimeter, the blues are coming through. We're getting some of those rich reds that are starting to peek through that was too vibrant before we did the gradient map. We're letting some of the original tones of the purples and blues of the Borealis come through by simply using this shadow and blending it through. Let's blend it through a little bit more. Let's go to the underlying layer and let those highlights come through, just like we did with the stars, and see what happens. Now I think it's affecting it too much. We're losing too much of the specular highlights down there. So let's go ahead and let these highlights of this layer go through just a little bit. Now it's not really doing much for us. So I think really our best bet here is just letting this layer, the gradient map shadows come through for giggles. Ooh, that's starting to give us a little bit of fun play in there too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the underlying layers, deeper tones and shadow tones, uh, both from a luminosity perspective but from color those are coming through as well so we're getting just some of those subtle hints of blues and purples and magentas that are in the borealis and star field so i think that mixture is good i like the way that it looks i think it's fine the only thing that's distracting me i love the the panther's eyes i love the the african landscape the stars that those really strong highlights the only thing that's distracting me is i want to see what it would look like if we took the gradient map effect off of his face so some of that pure black of the mask would come through and if you'll notice the gradient map comes with a layer mask already it's a white mask it's revealing the entire effect of the gradient map so let's go ahead and start painting on it to get rid of it on the black panther's mask here's a little tip I want to get it off of the mask. I don't want to get it off anywhere else. So I have to be very careful where I paint. Or I can help myself out by making a selection that forces me to only paint inside of it. And since I have a layer of the Black Panther that's extracted right here, I can control, hold control or command and click that layer. The layer icon, not the layer mask. And that makes an active selection around that layer, which is the shape of the Black Panther. Now when I paint anywhere, I can only affect and paint inside of the selection. Anything outside of it is protected. So if I come to the layer mask, which is active for our gradient map, hit B for brush, and I'm going to paint with black at 5%. I'm painting inside the selection. So no matter what I do, if I paint over here, nothing happens. But if I paint in here, we start taking that effect away just a little bit. Yeah, and now we're starting to see, especially let's go to his eyes. We're starting to see just a little bit of that mask purity come through right through there. Yeah, that's really cool. Now, to get rid of that selection so that I can move on to do anything else that I wanted to do, I have to hit Command or Control and D, and then it will deselect the selection. The last thing I want to do, I want to come to the layer, uh, the pure layer of the Black Panther that doesn't have any blend F on it, and I want to get rid of some of that texture 
of the uh, panther itself. Just a little bit. There we go. That was the only thing that was kind of bothering me, just a little bit. And a little bit maybe of this nebula field right through here. So we're letting some of the original texture of the Black Panther come through. Yes. This is it. I think this is perfect. Oh, one more thing. I'm so sorry. Last thing we have to do. We have to make his eyes glow. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I almost forgot that. So I'm going to come to the top of the very top of the layer stack and I'm going to make a new blank layer. And then the, this is the easiest, oldest trick in the book. I'm going to zoom in to his eyes. I've made my foreground color white, B for brush, and I'm on a low flow of 5%. And I'm just going to make my brush as big as his eye and just a little bit bigger and paint a little bit of white. At that low flow, it gives the illusion that his eyes are glowing. And now I can come in and make my brush and stay inside the perimeter and just make the eyes a little bit uh, more white. His mask is built with that little honeycomb grid so that he can actually see through the mask itself. But in the film, the mask's eyes are pure white. There's no honeycomb grid. So I can cover up the honeycomb grid. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and take our flow to 100%. And we're going to go ahead and now let's go to 50%. Let's go ahead in and be careful. And we're just going to paint pure white paint over the mask because this blank layer is on top of the layer stack everywhere. So we're just filling this with white paint, being careful not to go past the edge. We'll define a little bit of a shape. We're at 50% so we can build it up so that I can get the brush close to the edge without going too far. Paint in the centers right through there. Making my brush a little bit smaller to be careful to not go out over the edges. Feather it out just a little bit. And because we already did that glow above, hit Control or Command and Zero to zoom all the way out and look at those fantastic glowing eyes. <sighs> I love it. Wakanda forever. I love it. This is really cool. I dig this piece. So the only other thing that I would do is some artistic enhancement to it, which is really just running it through uh, Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. And I would do things like accentuate a little bit more of the texture, uh, accentuate some of the whites in it and the highlights and so forth. And why am I telling you about it? Let's just go ahead and do it. So we're going to make a composite layer of everything that's active in our document. And this is what I always do, because as I think I've said this in previous videos, this document that we've worked on untitled one and everything in here this is my living document so that if i i go forward with a new composite layer and start doing artistic enhancement there but as i'm working if i if i catch something that i don't like or i made a mistake or whatever else i have all of these original layers so when I work destructively for my own personal work and I'm not working commercially, uh, when I work destructively for my own personal work, I work non-destructively in this one aspect. I keep a living document of all the layers that it took to put this together. I would never flatten this and then start doing artistic enhancement because I want this to be able to reference back to if I need to, to make changes. So in this case, I need to make a composite layer of everything that's active in this and then move that composite layer to its own document so I can start working on that and close out this one. So to do a composite layer, you have to hit like 1700 hotkeys at once. And I'm going to tell you what they are for a PC first and then for a Mac. You have to hit Control, Alt, Shift and the letter E for everything. Uh, for a Macintosh, it's, it's uh, Command, Option, Shift and E for everything. And what that's going to do is it's going to look at all of the active layers in your document and make one composite layer of everything that's active. So at the very top layer, I'm going to hit command or control alt shift and E or command option shift and E. And now we have a new layer that is the composite layer of everything. Then to make this layer its own document, instead of making a new document by hitting control and N, another 12 by 18, all that kind of stuff, I can make this layer a new document by itself by right clicking the layer anywhere where there's not a word or the thumbnail. So the thumbnails here, here are the words. If I right click this gray neutral space on the layer, I get this fly out menu of things that I can do. And one of them is duplicate layer. It brings up the duplicate layer dialog. I can name it if I want to. So let's name it Black Panther movie poster and then destination. 
right now it's saying it's in the document of untitled one which is the one that we're working in and it's going to say do you just want to duplicate the layer and put it right in here great you could have hit command or control j you know whatever but if we do this drop down menu here are all the other available images that are open right now in my photoshop the color wheel the picture of our black panther the other stock pieces that we used and i can come down and hit new and when I do, I can uh, give that one a name. Uh, but anyway, I'm going because this is the duplicate layer. I'm going to duplicate the layer, and the layer is going to be called Black Panther Movie Poster. I can also name the document if I want to, which is where I should have typed Black Panther Movie Poster, whatever. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we have Untitled One, which is another one. I should have named it Black Panther Movie Poster. Uh, and the one layer that's inside of it is Black Panther Movie Poster. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this so that that will become a background layer. And it's all by itself. And it's a composite layer of everything that we just did. And so typically what I would do is then come back to this living document and I would save it as a Photoshop document. So it would preserve all of these layers. It's going to be a pretty big file. But it would preserve all of them so that ultimately I have the reference to go back to if I catch any mistakes or errors or I want to make changes. So in this case, now with our composite layer, what I'm going to do is take it into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter and start working in it with it in there. To take it into Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to hit Control Shift and A or Command Shift and A. And that'll open up the Camera Raw dialog. First thing that I think I want to do is I want to play with the white point and just reevaluate it a little bit so that all those, those tones will get a little bit brighter. Let's take out the shadows just a tad. Let's increase the black point so that it becomes a little bit more rich in tone. Let's add some texture. Yeah, the texture is really going to pop through, especially those stars. Just a touch of clarity, maybe. Yeah, I really dig that. I don't think we need to over sharpen this at all because I think it's relatively sharp as it is. So from this perspective, I think it looks really good. The only other, the last thing I would do, I'm going to hit OK because I'm good with uh, Camera Raw. The only other thing that I would do is add a vignette. And a vignette is essentially an, a darker outer perimeter. And then the center is a little bit more bright. And it kind of just pushes your focus into to the center of the piece. And the easiest way to make a vignette for me is to come down and make a solid color adjustment layer. So I'm going to come to the very top. And it's going to bring up the color picker and have us choose a color. I'm going to choose a color that is pure black where RGB is set to zeros and then hit OK. And now I need to change this because right now it's just filled the entire layer with black. I need to change the blending mode to overlay or soft light. Let's choose soft light. Now on the layer mask itself, it's a white mask. So it's a reveal all. It's revealing that entire layer. I'm going to just paint with my brush right in the center. My brush's flow is set to 50%, which is fine. I'm going to paint black onto the mask, which will start taking away the solid color effect. And I'm painting a general oval shape in the center, as you can see on the layer mask here. And then I'm going to change my brush's flow to 5% and then just feather it out along the edges a little bit more. Like that. Let's take a look at our layer mask just so you get an idea of what it looks like. It's just a feathered effect. Again, anywhere where it's black, the effect of this solid color adjustment layer is being hidden. Anywhere where it's white, it's being revealed, which means the outer perimeter is darker and the center is uh, uh, brighter. It's like golf. It's the reverse here. <laughs> so anyway, we have our nice little vignette and before and after, it just makes a nice little difference to push our focus into the image. You don't have to use vignettes. I just love vignettes. So. This is our Black Panther movie poster. And let's go back to that document. It's one, two, three, four pieces of stock, one picture of a character. And most of the time we're just using blend if because it gives us control over what elements can come through and be seen and using layer masks to just control it. We're using artistic and design acumen. What goes in the top third, what goes in the middle third, and what goes in the bottom third of our image. We're utilizing a screen capture from the film that's a poignant piece of the film that speaks to me emotionally and, and gives, me, gives me a connection to this character that I can then communicate to the cosplayer who already has a deep connection to the character because he chose to cosplay it. And together, he and I 
we made a really cool piece of art. Thank you for watching this part of the series, and now it's time to step into one of the next videos where we'll be going through some photography and Photoshop for more projects just like this one. And again, thank you for sharing this journey with me, because you're getting to see some of the things that are so important to me and what has motivated my career since the very beginning a long time ago. And last but not least, Wakanda forever. As I hit the microphone, Wakanda forever. Thank you.